Hey everyone, in this video, we are going to be covering the cell cycle. All right, before we can talk about what the cell cycle is, we need to just understand the different types of cells in organisms. So we have two groups of cells in living things. We have your somatic cells and we have sex cells. And the reason we want to distinguish these types of cells is because each group of cells will perform different types of division to make more of these cells. So what we're going to be talking about with the cell cycle today applies specifically to somatic cells. Somatic or soma in Latin refers to the body. So these are cells that make up the organs and tissues of, for example, the human body. So we have muscle cells, skin cells, we have nerve cells, blood cells, epithelial cells, white blood cells, the list goes on and on. So the majority of cells in the human body, for example, are considered somatic cells. They're cells that make up the organs and tissues. There are two select type of cells in humans that are your sex cells. These are specific type of cells that are used for reproduction in order to pass DNA down to offspring. So females have egg cells and males have sperm cells. So each of these groups of cells will do a different type of division to make more of themselves. So we're going to talk about the somatic cells and that how they go through this cell cycle. So the cell cycle is a specific series of steps that your somatic cells go through in order to make more of themselves. To, we need to make more cells in order to grow, right? If an organism is growing from this tiny little individual all the way up to an adult, you're needing more cells to do that. So going through the cell cycle will allow cells to make more cells to get bigger and grow. The other important reason that somatic cells will need to divide and make more cells is to repair any damaged, broken cells, or even just ones that are old. So cells that eventually die, they need to be replaced. We can go through the cell cycle to replace them. There are three main tasks to complete within the cell cycle. So we'll talk about different phases of where these tasks are occurring. But the task number one is to make the cell larger in size, really because we're going to be copying all the contents of the cell. We need to copy the genetic material. So that DNA, most likely, if it's a eukaryotic cell, is needing to be copied so that the new cell will have the exact same genetic information. And then lastly, we need to then split that cell into two new cells. So we're going to go through the steps to see how this occurs. So the majority of the time, your cells are not going to be actively dividing. The majority of time, they will be in a state called interphase. So interphase actually takes up three parts of the cell cycle. It's made up of the G1, S, and G2 phases of the cell cycle. And we'll talk about what happens at each of those phases. But really what's happening during interphase, the cell's growing, it's getting itself ready to divide. So the majority of the time, about 90% of the time, cells are in this interphase state. So the G1 part of interphase is where the cell is growing. And it grows because it's copying all the proteins it has, all the organelles it has. So in order to make room for all of those proteins and organelles, the cell will end up getting much larger in size. After G1, the cell will enter the S phase of interphase. So this is where DNA is copied. And the S in S phase stands for synthesized. New DNA will be synthesized from the original DNA. And it's really important that that new cell that we're creating have the exact same genetic material. Okay, That way the cells are exactly the same. So how DNA gets replicated during the S phase? So step one is that we need this enzyme called helicase. We know it's an enzyme because it ends in the letters ASC. Helicase, think of it as the zipper. It is going to unzip the two strands, the two connected strands of DNA. After it starts unzipping the strands of DNA, 
the single-stranded DNA is now exposed, and a new enzyme called DNA polymerase will come in, and it's going to add complementary nucleotides. And so this follows your complementary base pair rules. If polymerase sees an A nucleotide, it's going to add a T nucleotide. If it reads a C nucleotide, it will add a G, and so on. So this particular enzyme basically can read what nucleotide DNA has and add that complementary opposite strand of DNA to it. So DNA polymerase will continue along that strand of DNA until we get two full identical copies of DNA. So after the S phase, DNA has been copied, everything has been copied correctly, the cell will enter the G2 phase, which is right before division. This is where the cell is really double checking that it is ready to divide. Its DNA has been copied, the organelles have been copied, and so on. So if all is good, the cell will then move on to cell division. So cell division to actually divide your cell into two identical cells requires two processes. The first is mitosis, which happens in four phases, followed by the actual step of dividing the cell in cytokinesis. So another, in another lesson, we will go through what is happening during mitosis as well as cytokinesis to actually divide one cell into two identical cells. So lastly here, just to connect what we're talking about to the real world and why your cell cycle matters. So your cell cycle is really important that it functions properly because that is how, again, we can grow and repair damaged cells. However, if your cell cycle is not controlled, it is happening rapidly and steps are not happening in order or they're not happening correctly, this is where cancer can occur. Cancer is uncontrolled cell growth, which means cell division is happening rapidly. So it's important that the cell cycle works properly to avoid cancer. So what I recommend doing is watching this Amoeba Sisters video to understand the connection between the cell cycle and cancer.